KGB spy Jack Barsky and former CIA operative Bob Baer. So, Jack, let's focus on this intercepted conversation between Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak and his bosses in Moscow. What if the Russian ambassador was simply lying about Kushner and his reported desire to set up a secret communication line with the Kremlin? I mean, how likely is it that the Russian ambassador might have known he was being monitored and lied about Kushner to try to confuse U.S. officials or to spread misinformation? Uh, what if and what if and what if? Uh, yeah. The bottom line is that we're dealing with a, a very, very uh, experienced operative. Uh, Mr. Kislyak, uh, he, he's, he's sort of my generation. He, uh, uh, you know, imbibed uh, communist I ideology with the mother's milk. And he came to the United States in 1982 as a low-level diplomat with the UN. That meant one of two things. He either was KGB or he was reporting to the KGB. <laughs> and, and so he, he is a very, very experienced player. You don't know what you're getting when you're dealing with this guy. So you, you, you have to touch him with, with utmost care. So what is your gut telling you about what we've learned in this Washington Post report and what sources are telling CNN essentially uh, confirming that there was some kind of a conversation about setting up a secret line of communication physically at a Russian diplomatic facility for the Trump uh, transition team essentially to use to communicate about Syria and other matters is what this source is telling us. I, I just don't want to believe that somebody can be that naive to suggest that it is safe to use Soviet uh, Russian communication channels rather than American ones. Uh, that, that's mind boggling. So my, my gut's saying I hope not. I can't, I can't say any more. This would be all speculation after that. Would there have been security concerns for the Russians in doing this? Uh, to some extent, but more so for us, obviously. So, Bob Baer, whoever leaked this information to the Washington Post apparently did so, knowing that he could be exposing, he or she could be exposing uh, some of the inner workings of this intelligence gathering. And now Russia knows the U.S. can tap into whatever channel Ambassador Kislyak was using with Moscow. How big of a concern is that? Well, I think that the Russians know that their cell phones are being listened to. And I can only imagine what happened. Let's not forget, Anna, that this report has not been denied by the White House. And, and I have to say, I have to agree with Jack, that this is just outrageous. I have never heard and an American official, even designate in the new White House, go to somebody like Russia, to the Russian ambassador, and say, listen, we don't trust our own communications, but we're going to use yours. Do you mind? I mean, Ambassador Kisilyak must have thought he had entered a different galaxy. He probably <laughs> called back to Moscow and said, you won't believe just what happened. Um, I don't think there's any sources and methods that have been compromised in this. We're not reading Russian communications, diplomatic communications, encoded communications. So he was on the phone, and this is going around with the oligarchs, too, and they're, they're laughing at us. I, I can't tell you, I've never heard of this, a new White House coming in, approaching a foreign government, and asking to use their communications to communicate back to their capital. It's just never happened before. This is just this is bizarre. Bob, I want to ask you, could this have just been fake, Mis you know, trying to deflect or create misinformation, uh, confuse U.S. intelligence sources, again, during uh, the course of, of leading up to the new presidency? It's possible, but the White House right now should just flat out deny it. Say, listen, here's the transcript from this meeting with the Russian ambassador, with Flynn and the son-in-law. Here's what happened. Here's why we did it. You know, we need to clear this up, the relations between... Uh, the Trump administration and Russia are very confusing for me. And also, there's always the question of quid pro quo. I mean, you know, the, the, the Trumps, the Kushners all have business interests in Russia. And are they getting something for this back channel? I just don't know. I mean, I, I do want to know, and I hope the Senate and the FBI gets to the bottom of it very soon so we can get through this. We all want to know the truth, and I think it's important on that note to bring up that 
As you point out, Jared Kushner and his attorney have not denied this report. The White House has not denied this report. They've simply said no comment. And on the flip side, Jared Kushner's attorney, Jamie Gorlick, has commented and released a response to the Reuters report that uh, also came out in the last 24 hours, suggesting that Jared Kushner had had at least a couple of other phone calls with the Russian ambassador that he did not disclose on his security clearance form or hadn't reported previously between April and November of last year. Let me read you the response that she said to that report. She says, uh, Mr. Kushner participated in thousands of calls in this time period. He has no recollection of the calls as described. We have asked Reuters for the dates of such alleged calls, so we may look into it and respond, but we have not received such information. So she has responded to that, but not this. Uh, that silence perhaps speak volumes. Jack, what is the potential upside for Russia and Kislyak in this idea for a, a secret communications line? Why would Russia reportedly be interested in using a different secure channel to discuss security issues? No, I, I don't think it has so much to do with this secret communication line. I think we're, we're blowing this a little bit out of proportion. If you think now we're going to get into this situation where uh, there's going to be a secret communication from the White House to the Kremlin, uh, bypassing everything else, I think it's more or less, you know, the, the whole idea is what they're trying to do is here to create chaos to the extent possible. And we're helping a great deal by, uh, by, by acting the way we are as a, a you know, in, in our leadership here. Bob, in effect, Russia has, has done what it had intended, and that is to create more questions in the, the system here in the U.S. Yes, whoever at the KGB is running this covert action campaign should be a medal right now because we are in total confusion. They are calling the shots, and from an intelligence officer's perspective, mine, it's brilliant operation. So th the Russians are good. Gentlemen, let's listen to how former CIA director Michael Hayden reacted to these reports of Kushner discussing a secret line to Moscow. General Hayden, is this nefarious or is this naivete? Well, Michael, right now I'm going with naivete, and that's not particularly very comforting for me. I mean, what, what manner of ignorance, chaos, hubris, suspicion, contempt would you have to have to think that doing this with the Russian ambassador was a good or an appropriate idea? So, again, the naivete out doesn't make me feel very good about many things. We heard Jack use the word naive. Bob, do you agree? Could this be sheer naivete on Kushner's part to reportedly push for secret lines to the Kremlin? I do hope it's naivete. It doesn't look good for us in any case, and it'll never look good. But the alternative is that they knew what they were doing, and there's some sort of secret ag agreement that they're keeping from the government. That would be much worse if it wouldn't be, you know, in you know, a real collusion with the Russians. Uh, I Bob. refuse to believe that so far, but, you know, you, you, we got to see. Bob Baer, Jack Barsky, thank you both. Coming up, Russian misinformation. Why would former FBI Director James Comey let a piece of Russian intelligence that he knew to be fake drive his decision to publicly denounce Hillary Clinton's email habits? We'll break it down.